Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is my first, so this is my first video doing formulating and how to make your own skincare at home. If you have been on my channel before, if you look through any of my other videos, this is kind of a change in direction for me. So if you are interested in that, go ahead and check out the video. I will link it above and you can just kind of see why I made that change in direction. So as you can tell from the title of the video, this is all about how I started formulating and how you can start as well and things to kind of check off your list and to look for when you're in the process of beginning because it can be pretty overwhelming. So I hope breaking down a few ideas for what I did and what I think is a really great um, way to do it will help you. So let's get going. So first of all, and I really don't think I should need to say this, but you should be interested in it. So one of the first ways that I knew I was really into it was I was looking at all the ingredients on the back of skincare. I was kind of like seeing what worked with my skin, what didn't, what areas of my skin needed help, what didn't, and I had a cabinet full of skincare. Now, just because you have a cabinet full of skincare doesn't mean you necessarily want to make it. So really kind of step back and see, do you want to make it? Do you just want to buy it? Are you interested in clean? Are you interested in um, high end? Where that leads you. So. I don't think that just because you love skincare, everyone necessarily wants to make it. But when I started realizing that I was looking at ingredients and then seeing what each ingredient did, um, it kind of just led me naturally into wanting to make it myself. And also I like to do things like better <laughs> than other people. So I felt like, oh, I can make this at home. I can do it better. Um, I also liked knowing what was in all my products and if I am making it. I see exactly what's in it and yeah, I think it's self-explanatory. So the second thing, this really should be the first place that you start, but research and read everything. There is so much out there. Um, not all of it is 100% accurate or even 20% or 10% accurate. So definitely use more scientifically based articles or blog posts. Um, if it says no preservatives needed and there's water, just go away. I mean, that's just a little tip, but um, you know, you, you do want to kind of steer clear of kind of the like totally DIY, naturally homemade. Um, there's nothing wrong with certain things like that, but if you really want to be considered a serious formulator and take this to the next level, you kind of have to understand that certain things like preservatives um, and sometimes even synthetic ingredients are potentially part of how you formulate. So research and read. Um, I checked out multiple books at the library. There are tons of blog posts. I will link some of them below. Humble Bee and Me, Tara Lee, um, she's on YouTube. There are just some really great people out there as well. The third thing is to go deeper. So after I read a lot and was still kind of at a loss of what, how do I actually start? I enrolled in the skincare formulation class. So I chose the one with Formula Botanica and that was the, what's it called? Diploma in Organic Skincare Formulation. And it's a go at your own pace, it's all online. And I think I finished it in about three or four months. That was not me rushing. I was totally going at my own pace. Sometimes I wouldn't be able to formulate for a week or two. And most of the time I would get through like a lesson a week if I was lucky. I found it invaluable. They really give you the building blocks and then from there you can progress and build as much as you want because it really is the sky's the limit with formulating and skincare. So I thought that was a great place to start. I, I recommend it wholeheartedly. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive. I think it's a, a really great investment. Now I say that this is the third thing. If you read books, you've checked out books from the library, spent time watching videos, reading books, and you're kind of like on the fence, you're not excited about it, I wouldn't suggest dropping the money to enroll in a course like that. Um, it, it might just not be for you. For me, at that point, all I wanted was to get my hands dirty and start formulating. So I knew that it was for me and it proved to be. So number four is kind of goes along with the third one, but that is to start buying the basics. Now, I don't necessarily recommend going out and buying every ingredient under the sun, but there are some things that I just think you, you're you definitely gonna need. So for example, some beakers. Um, I have more, but they come in various sizes. 
You can buy them for like 10, 20 bucks on Amazon. I will link some below. Obviously like spoons you can buy. You can buy these glass rods to stir, but you don't need to. I would just go with spoons if you have them. I honestly, I started out with little like glass ramekins from my kitchen. So a lot of the things that you have in your kitchen will suffice. And then when it comes to oils and butters, you can buy a lot of the basics at like say Whole Foods or a grocery store maybe. So you don't even have to go to a specialty store. But I would start with some types of oils that maybe you already know you like. So a lot of people have jojoba oil. Um, I personally love rosehip oil and I loved it before. So I had that. Um, you can easily find sweet almond oil. You can easily find shea butter, cocoa butter. So these are kind of the basics. If you're seeing them come up again and again in different formulas, probably need them. I have all of that and much, much more. But start with the basics and don't go crazy. Like I said, you can buy these at the same time. My little glass ramekins worked really well. And I already had those in my kitchen and spoons already had them. Next thing, number five is understanding the important aspects of formulating. Like I kind of mentioned before, preservatives, that's one thing. If you're actually going to take things to market one day, if that's your goal, or even if you want to give it out to your friends and family, you need preservatives. That's if it has water. Um, anything that has water in it is basically a breeding ground for bacteria, mold, um, fungi. So putting preservatives in it, and they can be natural. I do pretty much 100% natural and there are some really great preservatives out there. So don't let that word scare you. Do a little bit of research into it and really think about what you need to do to make these legit. And basically, like you don't wanna embarrass yourself. Labeling is another big thing to understand. There are some basics of kind of what you need on it. If you're based in the US, which is where I am, it's actually a little bit more lax. Um, but if you go by EU standard, that's what I will do. Um, you're basically following the highest form of the guidelines for your labeling. So of course you need to have how much is in it. I'm just using the ordinary, this um, bottle as an example. So you will need to have how much is in it. Here we have 30 milliliters. Um, you will need to have your either directions or ingredients. Sometimes they don't list the ingredients if it's a super small bottle. All the time you can find them elsewhere. You also need to have how long it's good for. So on this one, this is sea buckthorn oil from The Ordinary, and it has this little, I will post it above. It's a little like jar, and it says 6M. So this is good for six months. So that's something important to keep in mind. But there's a whole lot of information out there on labeling. And if you really, like I said, if you intend to go to market, you do need to learn the basics of it and not just put your name and what it is. <laughs> okay, number six is to start small and keep it simple. My dad always said, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> but I'm not saying you're stupid. So I started when, even before I took my course, I was just itching to get into it. And what I started doing was making oils. I just made facial oils. I didn't even use any antioxidant, um, which vitamin E you'll see added to a lot of facial oils. And that's because it's an antioxidant and it helps reduce the oils from going rancid and spoiling over time. It just makes them have a longer shelf life. Um, they don't need preservatives, but I wasn't even putting that just because I was using it and I was using it pretty quickly. But I, I would definitely recommend starting, starting to play around and use something like a facial oil where you're basically, you're just mixing two oils together and you can play around with the percentages. Yeah, just play around. I think oils are one of the easiest ways and you can kind of see what your skin likes, what other people's skin like. Um, I know a lot of people like jojoba oil, and for me, it doesn't, it's not the best for my skin. It doesn't sink in fast enough, and I still need more hydration. So stuff like that I learned way before I even started taking the course. Number seven, take all the notes. This is a hard one for me because I am the type of person that I learn by doing and I don't always reflect and kind of like debrief, if you will, as best as I should. But if you do not take notes, you will forget what you made. I've had so many times where I'm like, what, did it, what is this? Like, it looks like something I made. It kind of smells like something I made. But if it doesn't have a label, if it doesn't have a date on it or a batch number, 
I may not know and I think I'll remember but you make so many that over time you just you totally forget another key thing is to write down what it was like making it what it looks like afterward maybe what it looks like 24 or 48 hours later and these are the invaluable tips that when you are looking back and you're like hmm what was that one formula that I made that totally didn't hold up and didn't emulsify I don't remember what it was but like let's look through my notes you can tell there also maybe things you want to improve like this cream goes on but it doesn't really sink in or it's too greasy things like that you write them down you don't have to try to remember in your head and then you'll have it for the next time okay number eight if you've gotten through all these steps and you're really kind of on a roll you're making stuff one of the harder and scarier things to do is to share it with your friends and family before you ever go to market with any product it should be shared heavily um, there's no better way to know if it works or not than to ask people friends and family are tricky because they often just tell you like oh I love it thank you Dana like blah 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 and you you do have to try to elicit their honest feedback so say like okay I know you liked it but can you tell me was it too greasy was it too oily did it sink in was the smell too much so maybe ask them questions that you might think of just so that they really start giving you stuff and you know you do have to make it known to them that you need this feedback and so your feelings won't be hurt because you'd rather it happen now than in a year when you're trying to sell it and people hate it so definitely get that feedback and lastly this is like my first one my first and my last I feel like they should go without saying but practice it is the biggest thing if I had all day and I had no jobs and I could just practice all day that would be wonderful um, but if you can spare any time even if it's 20 minutes to do one formula after work do it and then you'll start being able to kind of see your progress Heart, the hardest part about it all is sometimes starting so I might have all these ideas for what I want to make but it's like sitting down and actually getting to work on it can be the hardest but just put some music on, put a podcast, whatever you need, and start going. I don't know how else to say it because it's one of those things where it's like you just have to start. But I promise you it's not as scary as it seems and it's the biggest thing. Just go. And number 10, you're going to fail. You're going to fail a lot. And you're going to get to a point where you're like, oh, I didn't fail. And then you'll fail. And that's okay. That is absolutely okay. That is actually how you learn the most. If you never failed at anything, you would never change anything. Things would just remain the same and it might be mediocre at best. So failing and failure is a part of this and it's not something to be embarrassed about or ashamed of. It is really your biggest learning lesson. And if you've written down notes, you can use that to be like, hmm, well, this emulsifier didn't work with this and at uh, this temperature and then you can change it and then the next time it might be better or worse but you keep going and just expect failure to be a part of it and don't be too too hard on yourself so guys I think that's it so those are 10 different things that I had to kind of contend with when I started and I hope that if you are starting these are some of the things that you're thinking about um, feel free to ask me any questions below about maybe if you're starting and you don't know where to turn I'm happy to help. So I can't wait until my next video. And thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.